Okay, again, we're going to solve by completing the square. And my first step is always to get the x variable term, the variable terms on the left, the constants on the right. Then complete the square. Subtract 18 from both sides. Now, here, before I go any farther, I've got to look and see that my x term is not 1. My x squared term is not 1. So if x squared coefficient, if the coefficient of x squared is not 1, divide both sides of the equation. And the reason is I need to do that in order to complete the square and go on as usual. So I'm going to divide both sides here. And I could have done it up here, but it's easier to do it at this point when I'm simplified a bit. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. These cancel out, and now my x squared coefficient is 1. 12 divided by 3, that's, that gives me negative 4x. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now I can go about completing the square. Because my leading coefficient is, is a 1. Doing that by adding b squared over 4 to both sides. b is negative 4. So this gives me x squared minus 4x. And this is, 4 times 4 is 16 divided by 4, so that's just 4. And this is also going to be 4. Okay. So com coming up here to finish, this is going to give me x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 6. I now have my perfect square trinomial here, and it's x minus 2 squared. It's a negative 2 because the middle term's negative. And I'm going to find the square root of both sides. So x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 6. So this problem took an extra step. After isolating my variables on the left and my constants on the right, I saw that my leading coefficient was not 1. So I had to divide both sides of the equation by that coefficient 3. Once I was there, then I went about completing the square by adding this term to both sides, getting a perfect square trinomial, which is this, and taking the square root of both sides to get my solutions. Thanks for visiting educator.com, and I will see you for the next lesson.